YouTube and welcome to a, uh, a special video that uh, I'm making because the live unboxing um, didn't use a proper microphone and nobody could really hear what I was saying. So I thought I'd kind of make a short video just to show you guys this set again. Um, just to remind you, this is a set that arrived from Royal Mint Historics. So you can buy quite a lot of coins that aren't current release modern coins from the Royal Mint under the Historics banner. And uh, you know, sometimes I think the prices are a little bit too high, but there's nothing wrong with high prices if you're getting good quality. So uh, just to give you a little bit of the background about this set, this was offered, um, it's a 1937 proof set, and it was offered by one of the Royal Mint Mint Mark uh, managers as and described as close to FDC. So FDC stands for Fleur de Coin. Uh, FDC is absolutely perfect. And this was described as kind of almost perfect. So one has to watch out for that. But it was described as a very, very high caliber set. And the price that the Royal Mint um, charge for this coin set is around about seventeen and a half thousand pounds. Could have been seventeen seven fifty, but around seventeen and a half thousand pounds. And uh, I want to show you this set because I think it's important that you guys see the kind of thing you can expect from the Royal Mint at the seventeen and a half thousand pound mark. So you can see uh, the coins arrived in their little Royal Mint pouches. And the set itself is um, come, arrives with a, a, a 1937 box, specimen set box. Um, you know, these boxes are never really used because they actually damage the coins. So uh, they rub, the material rubs on the back of the coins and gives them kind of these kind of lines in them. And uh, so generally not a good thing to see the coins in these boxes for too long. But people like to see and collect the boxes as well. It kind of puts it in historical context. So I'm just going to take a look again. You saw these coins in the uh, video the other day. And I just want to take a look at the coins. When you buy a 1937 set, everything about its value relies on the 1 and the 5, particularly the 5. So when you look at one of these sets, you have to look at the 5. And we'll look at the 5 in a minute. The 5 is the one that holds um, probably... 60% or more, maybe even 70% of the value of one of these sets. So if the five is the one that's pretty low class, then the set has a much, much more limited value. So let's take a look first. So as the, the order they come, the one is the second one in the set that's important. And we're gonna have a look at the one and see what we think of it. You know, um, the key thing with these coins is whether they are cameo no cameo or ultra cameo because cameo and ultra cameo on these coins has quite a big premium in terms of price and you can see here no sign of cameo on the uh, reverse sometimes if there's a very good cameo on the front then this coin would get a cameo rating in this case and what is a cameo rating i think it's really the difference in um the difference between the frosting and the the fields in terms of reflectivity so if there's you know you, it may have a little bit of a frosting but if there's not very much highly reflective stuff going on on the fields it may still not get a cameo and to get ultra cameo it needs to have a frosting on both sides and the same high reflectivity so this one is not a uh, ultra cameo um, on a good day it might get cameo but I'm not even sure it doesn't really look like there's anything very much in terms of cameo on the front so probably this will just get a rating without cameo and that kind of puts it down a grade compared to one that has the cameo um, properly uh, if it gets a 63 then it's probably worth about 2,800 um, pounds at the moment the prices have gone up quite a lot if it got a 66 then it could be a five thousand pound coin even uh, so there's quite a big difference in price and if you get four coins in a set which are really good then that's going to be quite a big 
improvement in price over a basic set. So the range of prices of these sets can be incredibly variable. Let's have a look at the others. So the Half Sovereign. So the Half Sovereign looks as if it does have a cameo on, um, on the portrait side, but again, a little tiny bit of a cameo, not much frosting on this side. I suspect this might get a cameo rating. And the next thing you look for is the hairlines on the on the fields. And you know, most of the hairlines you'll see on this side. Not, I mean, it's not bad, but there's still a little bit on there. Um, probably that would get a 63 on a good day, a 64. Grading of these coins I found to be pretty subjective but they do often get pluses and stars and things like that as well. Then you've got the Two Sovereign. The Two Sovereign is Cameo uh, on this side. You can see quite a big difference in reflectivity, but no Cameo really on this side, so it's not Ultra Cameo. So it's not gonna be the very best, it's gonna be something in the middle. But the Two Sovereign is not the one that really stores the value because even a very good one of these doesn't um, really ha have a major boost in value like it would do if it was on the Sovereign or like it was on the, um, the Five Sovereign. For all you guys who like the idea of getting a really good quality coin, Royal Mint coin particularly, then the coincollection.co.uk is your place and the magic uh, promotion code is CARL for November. So the place where the value is, is really this coin, the Five Sovereign. If this is a good one, it could be worth the £17,500 the Mint has uh, asked for it. So it's quite important to look pretty critically at the five sovereign. And, you know, this one is not, not bad, really, in many ways, on the, uh, on the reverse. Um, no, there's nothing to really moan about. I don't think it's a massive ultra cameo coin, but there is, you know, some kind of difference in reflectivity between the frosting and the mirrored fields. On this side, um, you know, it's cameo, which is kind of pretty cool. But, and you probably see the but kind of staring in front of you, but we'll kind of zoom in so we can see exactly what that but really is. And the but is these three parallel lines. Parallel lines on coins are always a bit of a nasty thing to find because if something's in parallel, it's usually because it's man-made in some way. Parallel things don't happen by accident. So if you look for parallel lines on the fields, they're either, um, you know, there are hairlines on some coins or they could be um, polish marks uh, on other coins, depending on the era and the type of coin it is. But on this particular coin, I think that those parallel lines would mean, well, they, they would either mean one of two things, depending on how NGC viewed them. They could potentially, on a bad day, mean a details grading. On a good day, they mean that even though the fields on this coin are actually pretty nice, and there's very few hairlines, and if it was a perfect portrait, it might get 65, um, potentially even 66, although probably not. Um, those marks on the on the portrait, um, they really make the coin look much less. And you can see that even there's a little bit of a patch below the um, below his ear as well, and it doesn't have very thick frosting on it. So I, I would have thought that probably you're looking at maybe a downgrade from 65 to a 63 with those lines. The problem is that if you have a 63 coin, it's not going to be a coin that has enough value to warrant the price of £17,500. So you're probably looking at, at the most, even a £12,000 set. Um, and the Royal Mint are charging £17,500 for it. So I think that, you know, if you look at it in terms of absolute value, obviously things you buy from Royal Mint have a premium, uh, but I think in this case the premium is too high for the quality of coin that this is. So um, 
This coin set is going to go back. One of the nice things about buying from the Royal Mint is that they have a 14 day return policy. So uh, hopefully they'll see this video and uh, maybe think about reselling this at a lower price point because um, at the moment, you know, describing it as close to FDC uh, is not the right description for it. It is not close to FDC. And I think they need to be careful how they describe these sets. Uh, and be a little bit more realistic in their grading. People generally like to be surprised that something is a little bit better than they think, rather than something which is less than they think. And I think that my message to Royal Mint Historics is really the actual grades could do with being maybe half a grade to a grade higher than they say, not one or two grades lower than they say. And uh, so uh, they'll get this one back and they will resell it and hopefully the person they resell it to will pay a little bit less for it and be happy that this offers value for money in their collection. So uh, yeah, sorry for the audio quality on the previous um, video. Uh, my apologies for that. I didn't have my pro mic with me, but this one should be a little bit better because it's been recorded uh, on the proper microphone. So that's all from me for now. And please uh, like, subscribe, catch up on some more Numistaka videos pretty soon.